If you're a big swim team and you like to order a lot of gear, maybe you ought to check out Swim Outlet Team Division for these reasons. Swim teams receive a 10% discount on bulk orders. Swim teams or organizations get an 8% commission on referred sales. You'll also like their customization services, which is affordable and available at all times during the year for all team gear. With over 50,000 items in stock, you can get most anything you want. Swim Outlet Team Division. You need to try it out. You'll be glad you did. This is the Morning Swim Show for Monday, May 20th, 2013. I'm your host, Jeff Cummings. The University of Southern California's women's water polo team had a marathon match against Stanford University last week, winning the team title after five overtime periods with a score of 10 to 9. On that team was Madeline Rosenthal, who scored a goal in overtime to keep the Trojans' hope of winning alive. And Madeline joins us now in the Finice Monitor from Los Angeles. Madeline, it's good to see you. How are you today? I'm great. How are you? All right. I see a big smile on your face. It probably has not left since winning that team trial for you. No, we're all still on cloud nine. Yeah, and, I mean, it's just unbelievable to believe it was a, a, a match that lasted 40, of actual playing time, 45 minutes and 47 seconds. How, how much of that were you actually in the water? Um, personally, I, w I was in for a lot of it. I think um, there were six of us that were in, for, I think, pretty much halfway through the third quarter through the end of it, all five overtime periods. So... It was pretty tiring, yeah. That's pretty tiring. You probably slept very well at night. Yes, I definitely did. <laughs> uh, what gets you in shape for games like that that, that last so long and, and are probably pretty grueling mentally and physically? Yeah, well, um, we do a lot of conditioning swimming, and we have long practices. Sometimes, you know, we're able to practice for four hours a day, which is just great. And uh, we also played a couple back-to-back -back games in season, and I remember – a lot of us are like, why are we playing back-to-back -back games? Like, these practices are so long, and now we finally know why. Yeah, we were definitely yeah. conditioned enough to be able to last, so it was worth it. Well, take us, take us through your own personal viewpoint of the, of the match itself. I mean, after um, regulation play it was tied up, and then, like we said, five overtimes. Yeah. I mean, what, what was going through your mind of, you know, we got to get this win? Well, you know... Get, the game started and we went down 3-0 and I think it was, was a little bit of obviously a setback but um, I got two great passes from my teammate Kaylee and my other teammate Nina and McCall scored this amazing backhand and kind of brought us back in the game but we were trailing most of the game and then in the fourth quarter um, Hannah Buckling scored a shot from like eight meters out um, skipped right in and tied it and when Hannah scored that goal, I got goosebumps, and they didn't go away for the rest of the game. And then um, Ani scored an amazing shot on six on five that put us ahead, but then they came back, and then overtime was long. Uh, we um, each scored one goal in the first two periods of overtime, and so it was still tied. And then it went into sudden death, and three periods of sudden death without a goal. And then Ani Espar with that amazing shot. Um, bar in just perfect yeah sudden death where you know the first team to score a goal basically the the match ends i mean it must the adrenaline your heart rate must have just been so high knowing that it's all or nothing in these these three periods yeah when we hadn't played a game that went into overtime this season so it was a little bit unfamiliar for us but we didn't really let that affect us we just played our game and I think there was a lot of emphasis on defense for all of us. I think for both teams, going three quarters of sudden death without any scoring definitely proves that. But um, I remember that last counterattack going from defense to offense. In my head, I said, I'm not sure how much longer I can do this. And then Ani put that goal in, and it was over. And everyone jumped in the water, and the, the coaches were in, and we were all hugging and just so happy. And... I remember telling my teammate, Olivia, you have to hold me. <laughs> I can't I can't tread water anymore. Yeah, probably all of you need to be lifted out of the water. It's probably yeah. every ounce of energy you had. And again, just a testament to to you guys there that you've been able to do that. Tell us tell us what the the pep talks that you as you as among the team and your coaches were giving to get you 
going and, and keep you energized and motivated through that whole overtime period? Well, um, our head coach, Yovan, he definitely was motivating us. Um, a little bit of tough love at times when we needed it, when he could see that we were, um, our energy was a little bit lower. He said, I need to see it in your eyes, guys. Like, and then he, you know, gave pep, pep talks to um, Kelly and then Ani to get them fired up and it worked. It was great. Well, you guys were in the championship match last year. You lost to Stanford by a couple goals. What was the difference uh, this year that allowed you guys to be able to hold on and be able to challenge them so well? Well, I think that, you know, it sounds a little bit cliche, but we really truly believed that we could win and that we were going to win. And I think having that confidence amongst everyone, you know, we played Stanford three times before that in season and twice we beat them once they beat us so having those two wins under our belt we knew that we could beat this team and it was that confidence that kind of kept us level that was able to allow us to focus on our game plan and execute well your older brother michael is on the men's water polo team there and he was part of uh all five of those big wins that they had was there any kind of sibling rivalry going on, him taunting you at all, say, come on, Madeline, step it up here? Um, not so much ra- not taunting, definitely encouraging. My brother, my brother's great, the whole men's team. They won five times, and uh, my junior class and below us had, hadn't won a championship yet. And um, being at their last championship was at home at SC, so we were all there. And I remember they, they won, and we all were so happy for them, but we looked at each other, and it's like, it's about time this happens to us. Well, your so. parents were uh, swimmers uh, at USC, I understand, correct? Yeah, both of my parents swam at SC. That's where the, that's where they met. I like to say they met on the pool deck. So I have um, USC Aquatics to thank for my very existence. Well, how did your how did your brother and you get into water polo, knowing that you know your parents were swimmers? Did they guide you obviously to swimming first, and then you found water polo later? Yeah, we, I. Michael and I, we've been swimming since we were babies. And then um, our middle school team, our middle school had a water polo team. So naturally, you're in the pool swimming, water polos in the spring. So we, Michael started that first, and then I followed his lead. And um, both Michael and I in high school, like leading up to high school, we did swimming and water polo pretty much equally. And it was just water polo was our ticket to college So for both of us. So it wasn't until college that I kind of dropped swimming competitively. But... And we asked, this of, uh, we asked this of Michael when we did an interview with him last December, but I'm curious to get your take on what um, playing water polo was like growing up in Florida, where as opposed to now you're in Southern California, where it's pretty much everywhere. Yeah, well, I think that um, water polo has definitely grown in Florida. And in middle school and in high school, we started playing, and then we got all of our friends to come play with us. Like, you got to come play water polo. It's so much fun. And... So it didn't, for me, it didn't feel like a lot of people didn't play water polo in Florida because all of my friends played with me. But um, I was lucky enough that um, during the summers I would come out to California and play. Our club team would take training trips there. And so I did get more exposure. And then through um, the Olympic Development Program, I would also be able to play with California girls, which definitely helped me um, play at a higher level and become a better player, which led me to being recruited to West Coast schools. Well, what are your summer plans involved in, in terms of water polo? Will you, keep, uh, will you play for a club team here in the States? Um, I'm not entirely sure yet. We, I think we have the summer off from SC, but I'm actually going to be playing in water polo in Israel for a month, which is going to be a lot of fun. It's the um, Maccabees, so it's the first year that they have women's water polo there. So I'm really excited for that. That will be exciting, not just to uh, be be part of that first uh, water polo tournament there, but also to be visiting Israel. Will that be the first time you've gone there? Yeah, it'll be my first time in Israel, and I have a couple teammates from high school that are going to be going there too, so I'm really excited. Yeah, nice little reunion. Yeah. Um, and I would imagine the Olympics is uh, the big big goal for you to be able to uh, be on that 2016 team 2016 team they'll be trying to defend their gold medal yeah well um i know a lot of teammates and i have always dreamt of going to the olympics so obviously that's in the back of our minds but we're just focusing like year by year 
and something that's probably in the front of your mind is finals there at USC, you just <laughs> wrapping those up. How is, how's it been going? Yeah, about those. Um, no, finals are, finals are great. I was able to have um, some of my professors allowed me to take them before, but I do have one in about two hours, which it'll be okay. <laughs> yeah, I can't imagine having to uh, deal with all that in the middle of the biggest water polo tournament of the season. I mean, how, but I guess maybe it was, it was easy for you, kind of had a little balance. Were you studying it all um, between matches and, at Harvard? No, not at all. Um, our team, we didn't bring any of our materials with us there. Um, I mean, it's a, it's a business trip, and when you study it, it really does make your make you make you tired. And we had things that we needed to be focusing on. So, I mean, we knew that NC Two Ace was going to fall during finals all season. So we made plans and um, with our professors took um, exams early if we could and got our studying done before. Yeah, it was good that you're able to work that out. Sometimes professors aren't that flexible in terms of getting finals done. Yeah. Well, uh, Madeline, congratulations on a great season. Very, it was a very exciting match to watch, and um, I'm sure you guys will uh, always be reliving that in your minds. Yes. It's a long tape to play in your head, though. <laughs> I know. I've already watched the game back twice now, and I'll probably watch it a couple more. It's yeah, definitely I'm, I'm probably sure. the best moment of my life so far. Yeah, and I'm sure it'll be many more to come, Madeline. Uh, congratulations again, and uh, we'll see you, um, see you guys next season. Thank you. All right, so that was Madeline Rosenthal, part of USC's water polo team that just won the NCAA title. Congratulations to them. And that's going to do it for the Morning Swim Show. As always, keep track of all the latest aquatic sports news on SwimmingWorld.com, and please join us as well on Facebook and Twitter. I'm Jeff Cummings. Thanks for watching.